uh, that's when everybody comes out like, but you forgot. And how about <laughs> Hey there, guys. So much news to talk about. We've got the new Thor Love and Thunder trailer for you. We got Fantastic Beasts box office. We've got Danny Elfman and Phineas at Coachella. But first of all, I want to start with this week's Movie House shout out. It's a place that really is the first place I thought of when this idea began percolating in my mind. It is the Frida Cinema in Santa Ana, California, just uh -huh. south of here in Orange Frida. County. Yes, yeah, the Frida inspired by Frida Kahlo. And they do so much cool stuff and they really are all about serving their community. It is mm -hmm. their mission and they walk the walk. So they were founded in 2014. They were initially a repertory house and they do really cool stuff. Like they're in the middle of a big studio Ghibli retrospective Ooh. all this month. Yeah. And then um, next month on Mother's Day, they're going to do a Mommy Dearest mimosa brunch screening <laughs> which i think i have to drag my kid down there for i think i think it's time um <laughs> see what you could have <laughs> right see what wire hangers do to you um and so we there's that but then they've got the northman playing this weekend which is going to be Ooh, huge nice. for them and they've got everything everywhere going right now and they do more than just movies though i mean they are a, a focal point for the community um they work a lot with local charities they um help young aspiring filmmakers figure out things like projection and exhibition and they were closed for about a year off and yeah. on during the pandemic as so many small theaters were they had a bunch of drive-ins to still serve the community and, and virtual folks, cinema i think yeah, they, were doing, right? they did yeah. and folks told them like thank you for doing this it's the first time we've been out of the house in forever mm -hmm. so they that mission of, of community really is first and foremost in all they do so if you want to know more about their work and maybe be a donor to all of their great things they do we'll put a link down below the frida in santa Ana, california so thanks to you guys Woo. cool woohoo um yes we have important big blockbuster news for you the <laughs> thor <laughs> love and thunder trailer came out this week you ever feel lost just look into the eyes of the people that you love <laughs> not me what just listening it's like a Thor Guardians of the Galaxy crossover. Oh, and it okay. looks so fun. So Taika Waititi directed, but James Gunn definitely had a hand in it. Just looking at this trailer, it has a lot of the feel of Peacemaker to me in that mm. it's got like, it's got the Guns N' Roses sweet child of mine playing <laughs> in the background. And so you've got, you know, the, the rock metal bombast, but you've also got Thor feeling kind of vulnerable. And so it's that, that dichotomy of like all things big and brawny, but also a sweetness and a softness underneath. And it's going to be well, good. The Thor guardians, you know, crossover stuff felt very organic in, 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 uh, you know, infinity war and end game. So mm -hmm. that makes perfect sense that they would, they would want to go feature length on that. For sure. So that's coming out in July. So we will definitely have uh, things to say about that then, but this past weekend, the big movie kind of in theory was the new fantastic beasts and it, tanked by the standards of this kind of movie it has sure. the lowest opening of the three the original fantastic beasts opened with 74 million dollars and the second one crimes of grindelwald came out um a few years back made 62 million dollars this only made 43 million domestically i guess warner brothers is banking on it doing well in other parts of the world but not a lot I of mean, interest yeah exactly i mean i think there's a lot of there's kind of a perfect storm of just things going against this i mean it's not so much the pandemic at this point i think that that for like big enough franchise movies audiences have already demonstrated they're perfectly willing to run out and see it but i think that this series has kind of been an exercise in diminishing returns. Like even hardcore fans, I think are sort of put off by, you know, just not caring about this story so much. You know, you had the replacement of Johnny Depp, you have the Ezra Miller of it all. You have the JK Rowling of it all, of people not wanting to deal with her nonsense right now. Um, so yeah, I just think a lot of things can, just kind of came together. And from what I understand, you saw it, I didn't, but there's a definite feeling of this movie, like let's wrap it up. Cause we might not even do the next two at this point. Uh, I mean, that, that was, that's what I read several people say. Was that your take? I mean, in theory, there's more stuff to come, but that felt like more of a threat than a promise. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not sure uh, anyone's really, but it literally is literally diminishing returns at this point. If you look at the box office numbers, oh, so anyway, yeah, we'll see go. if four or five ever actually even happened. So there's that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You and I were talking last week about how we have zero FOMO for Coachella. 
Coachella yeah. happened this past weekend, but I kind of wouldn't have minded being there for this Danny Elfman set. He mixed in like the themes from The Simpsons and Batman and his Spider-Man theme. And he did the song from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Before Christmas yeah. But then he also did like Only a Lad and Just Another Day and a bunch of Oingo Boingo songs. So, um, and he's just ripped at age like 68. And also, you are psychic. You totally called it. Either that or you are the Phineas Whisperer. <laughs> because we were joking about Phineas doing songs from Four Town from the movie yes. Turning Red. And he did indeed do Nobody Like You, is it what it's called? I think so, yeah. I manifested it, Christy. I, I really <laughs> called that out to the universe. It was on your vision board. <laughs> <laughs> so um, look look for it online. Um, he did sort of a slower, kind of jazzier, soulful version of the the boy band anthem from Turning Red. Nice. So that was very funny. Um, there's a list on a website that we're not going to link to, but I want to talk about it because I refuse to provide them with the clickbait that this so clearly intended to be. But there's yes. a list of the 50 best romantic comedies where the earliest film is Harold and Maude from 1971. And they've got like 27 dresses and how to lose a guy in 10 days and any movie that you see playing on the monitors at dry bar when you're getting a blowout <laughs> but not like the apartment or some like it hot yeah harold and Maude <laughs> was the only pre-1980 movie on this list and then pre-1970 there was nothing so you know taking a page from jean-luc godard who once said you know the best way to review a film is to make another film sometimes the best way to review a listicle is to make another listicle so i made one and yours is far superior and so <laughs> interesting and such a cool cross section of stuff. We will link to that. Yes, you can read you. Alonzo's cool <laughs> list of his 50 best rom coms on well, the wrap. And to be clear, I wrote it as 50 great rom coms from I before see. 1980. They changed it into best. And I'm like, eh, that's when everybody comes out. It's like, but you forgot. And, how about da, 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 da. and I'm like, guys, I would never presume to tell you that I know what the best ones are. However, I will say that all 50 of these are great and you should see them. They did 10 things I hate about you, though, which I guess counts to Shakespeare. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Um, yes, talk amongst yourselves and please feel free to chime in. Um, the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial continues apace. Um, kind of juicy, gory details coming out from there. It's, it's in Virginia. He is suing her for defamation because and she wrote a piece in 2018 for the Washington Post in which she described herself as the victim of domestic abuse, which mm. he feels like he is being defamed by her saying that. And when they split in 2016, they both signed these agreements that they weren't going to talk about it. So ugly details are coming out, but that is going on currently in Virginia. There was already a case in England, right? That where they have lost. much, when they have much more generous libel laws there, which is why a lot mm -hmm. of times you'll see politicians and celebrities going after the British press before they go after the U.S. press. Uh, and even under those standards, he did not win the suit. So I guess this is another attempt to. I don't know. I, I, I mean, either I, way, he's done for. Either way, like, who's going to hire him? We were just talking about Fantastic Beasts, you know? Yeah, I mean, look, I, I at this point, I just, I see his name in a headline. I'm like, don't want to know. I don't want to know, <laughs> you know? And obviously, he's still got the fans out there. You know, the, they, they, they will show up on mass and twitter they they got the, his movie that was barely released in the united states and the top five of that academy awards oh, right. thing but uh yeah i just i don't want to know minamata um okay two more things the batman's now streaming on hbo max in case you yep. did not see it in theaters didn't feel comfortable seeing it in theaters wanted to have a break because it's two hours or 50 minutes long it's great and it's playing in your hbo max if you have that right now speaking of hbo max Mr. Rakes is not coming back to season two of the Gilded Age. Fine. <laughs> Don't need <Right>? him. <laughs> I mean, I, Marion's clearly meant to be with the Russell son from across the street anyway. Yeah, I think so. I think I think we got to the end of whatever Mr. Rakes had to bring to the story. So yeah, let's all just move on. I, I really hope there's a course correction in season two. Like I hope they really take a look at what worked and what didn't, because I think there's the show has a lot of potential, but I think that it 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 didn't quite find its footing yet. Like let's really cut down on the number of servants whose backstories we find out about, you know. I just don't think the show has enough real estate to handle everybody. But a bunch of all of them got bumped up to like main character. A bunch of like the recurring downstairs folks all got bumped up in terms of oh, the hierarchy. Oh, really? Yes. So we're going to get more downstairs. Anyway, when season two of The Gilded Age comes out, we will talk about it on our Patreon. We talked about season one on Patreon. So go find us there. <laughs>